Okay, so, um, yeah, so, so in the remaining time you have, maybe 10 minutes, uh, I haven't done this question before, so I don't know how long it'll take. Might take up to 20 minutes, but uh, I'll finish this question. So in the time you have, let me go through this uh, worksheet question. This is in the uh, worksheet that was posted as an old worksheet. It's uh, uh, labeled as problem five. It comes from a, a question from a colleague of ours in their textbook. I don't know if they've published it. They might still might not have published it. <laughs> um, it's an interesting scenario to work through. So let me uh, just sketch out the scenario. Whenever I see a description of a setup, I like to kind of sketch out what the setup is to make sure I can convince myself that I understood it. Um, there's something about a frictionless ice cube. Okay, we got an ice cube. What's happening with that? And a wood crate. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, wood crate um, that sit on the floor of a cargo truck that's stopped at a traffic light. Okay, I think I'm not going to draw the traffic light, but I'll finish drawing the cargo truck. Uh, when the light turns green, the truck accelerates forward. Okay, there's going to be acceleration. Okay, so part A asks, uh, draw a free body diagram showing the forces that act on the ice cube as the truck accelerates forward. Okay, um, so as a matter of good problem solving hygiene practice, whenever I'm asked to draw a free body diagram, I don't draw it on the figures that I already have because I think that clutters up the uh, pictures. A uh, free body diagram is really, it's a graphical problem solving tool that's meant to be as simplified as possible. So I like to draw it separately, just on its own. So I'm drawing free body diagram of the ice cube. Um, so the object, I like to represent it as simple as possible. And so until we start doing rotation, every object I draw in a free body diagram is going to be a dot because it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. So I'm drawing all the forces, all the real forces that act on the ice cube. And um, I guess the place I like to start is with the gravity because in almost every situation we deal with, there's always going to be gravity. And once you draw gravity, then you can start to ask this question and try to answer it. The question I'll ask myself every single time is, did I draw all the forces? And there are certain things you can check as you think through that. One is acceleration. So with only gravity drawn, uh, what I'm being told is that my acceleration should be downward. But because I drew this, this picture before, I'm imagining an ice cube sitting on a truck bed. I know it's not accelerating downward. If I, someone tells me this is accelerating downward, I tell them, no, that's wrong. It's not accelerating downward. So what that tells me is that I haven't drawn all the forces. So I need to think a little more. Could I get any more forces? And the hint here would be it's sitting on the truck bed. Uh, so whenever there's contact, you, there could be a contact force. And uh, I have the type of forces lecture, and one of the purpose of that type of forces lecture is to tell you, okay, there's gravity, that's your non-contact force, and every other force you will see in this class involves some sort of contact. So I'm going to have the contact force from the drop bed that's going to be the upward, and we call this normal force, or in conceptual physics courses, sometimes we call this a support force. It's a force that's perpendicular to the surface. That's the sense in which it's normal, uh, perpendicular. And um, it's a point away from the surface. So I've drawn two forces. I still ask myself the question, did I draw all forces? And um, one would be to say, okay, so I drew upward and downward forces. It looks like I could have zero acceleration. And going back to this picture, I'm going to say have a zero acceleration. Uh, it depends on your sense of intuition, if you feel comfortable with that or if you feel uncomfortable with that. Um, now, some people might be tempted to say, hmm, think this is accelerating forward or maybe even accelerating backward. Uh, if you're thinking of that, then what you need to think of is, okay, where could that force come from? Where could my some horizontal force come from? 
watch touching the ice cube so that it could have horizontal force. There's nothing that's touching it vertically. Uh, you only have this surface to think about. So the only force there could be is friction that could apply a force that's a tangent to the surface. And um, that's where you go back to the question wording and note that oh, frictionless ice cube. So anything having to do with the friction, I can't do. So that's where I roll back everything. And OK, no friction, no horizontal forces. And we did, and I must have drawn all the forces. So now we go back to, OK, since I've drawn all the forces, and the forces I've drawn here is consistent with the acceleration being 0, my um, ice cube must have 0 acceleration. So that's the drawing of the free body diagram of the ice cube and the kind of the conclusion that you would reach after having drawn free body diagram of the ice cube. Okay, now for part B, it says now draw a free body diagram for the crate as the truck accelerates forward. Let me draw it up above here so that it's easier to compare with the free body diagram of ice cube and so that I can keep this picture in the screen. So I'm going to draw free body diagram of crate. And again, I keep my free body diagram simple. I'm going to draw a simple dot to represent my crate. Uh, let me actually label the dot so that um, I don't confuse myself later. So I go through the same exercise. I think uh, with the crate, there's going to be gravity. Uh, there's almost always going to be gravity. And because I know the crate is at least not accelerating downward, so there must be no more force upwards, just like with ice cube that's keeping the crate up. So if there's going to be any acceleration, that'll be in the horizontal direction. And um, so we went through that analysis about the friction um, here. And I'm oh, sorry, I drew this too close, but with the crate again, there's no nothing that's uh, touching it from the side. So if there's going to be any horizontal force, it'll be due to friction. And what the question says is assume the crate stays in place on the floor, meaning as this truck is accelerating forward, the crate must be moving exactly the same way that the truck is moving. So it must be accelerating forward with the same acceleration that the truck has. So the crate must be accelerating forward which means for that to be true, in order for me to have drawn all the forces, I need to have some horizontal force. I need to just justify where is that coming from. And you know, that's gonna be friction. It's gonna be friction force. That's the only force it can be. And um, with the crate, until I've drawn this friction force, I wasn't done. So I've drawn the friction force. Now my uh, free body diagram showing the net force is consistent with direction of acceleration, uh, I can say to myself, okay, I've drawn all the forces and I haven't drawn anything extra. But then sometimes people want to draw force of acceleration, not a thing. The only force you can draw that doesn't involve things touching each other is gravity. That's the only non-contact force you have in this class. Okay, that's part B. I still got two parts left, right? Okay, uh, yeah. So let me actually copy this up here because it's a discussion about this and uh, I want to have this whole thing here. Authors are describing a scenario. Ursula has conflicting thoughts about whether backward force acts on the ice cube. You know, ice cube, because it looks like it might be moving backward. It falls off the truck. On the one hand, I can't think of anything that pushes the ice cube backward. That's kind of what I went through here. So it seems like there's no backward force, but the ice cube definitely slides backwards along the truck's floor. You know, you look at the truck sometime later, the truck is over here, and the ice cube has fallen off the truck. That's kind of what the scenario is. Uh, which means that there must be a backward force, at least to get it started. How can Ursula resolve this internal disagreement? The way I've drawn truck, I actually resolved it already. Because the way I've drawn the truck, the ice cube, it actually didn't have to fall backward. It just uh, had to fall straight down. It didn't move backward. And the way I'm drawing these pictures, I'm doing it in inertial reference frame. 
when you analyze things in inertial reference frame, a lot of the things that could be confusing will go away. The reason uh, there's a kind of conflict about intuition and what's happening there is because I think uh, naturally, you know, we like to think of um, person, like the truck driver. From the truck driver's perspective, the ice cube is uh, accelerating backward. Something is pushing it backward. But the reference frame of the truck driver is not an inertial reference frame. It's an accelerating reference frame. And the number one thing that we want to train you into doing is whenever you are analyzing forces, at least in this lower division class, analyze everything in the inertial reference frame. That will help avoid many different confusing scenarios. And, you know, there are upper division classes where you will have to analyze things in a rotating reference frame, you know, some sort of accelerating reference frame. And in order to do that, you need a quite a bit of mathematics to do it correctly all the time. So my advice to you for this lower division university physics class is just stick to inertial reference frame and start to develop intuition for how things move in the inertial reference frame. Okay, so we got one more part. By the way, so again, this exercise is a little bit different than how it would have been a class. In a class, you'll have a ton of opportunity to discuss with your classmates. That's the benefit of group work. I know me explaining things. It's not quite equivalent to that group work. I'm just doing something that's, you know, it's an ersatz um, discussion question that uh, I'm not, you know, debating with anyone. I'm just debating with myself. Uh, Okay, uh, part D. I might have already answered the part D. Okay. Describe Ice Cube's motion as seen by someone riding along inside a truck. Yeah, I said that that's what that is. Ice Cube is kind of accelerating backward from perspective of the driver. And then by someone who is standing still on the street next to the truck. That is the inertial reference frame. That's uh, kind of the ground frame here. Um, uh, truck looking through the cutout on in the truck's wall. Uh, the way I drew, I don't need a cutout. Um, yeah, so um, so the, this question is trying to walk you through the argument that I gave. And I think uh, E is basically, yeah, if you, so you know, I skipped to, to E as I was uh, explaining that internal conflict. Um, and I, I do think it's, uh, it's, so you know, if you have a study group, talk about this in your study group. Uh, see if you can explain what I explained to your friends, you know, someone who's not taking this class. Uh, when you can explain it to someone else, fully answer their questions, that's when you will know that you've um, understood this, is, this situation for yourself. So, um, so yeah, that's this question. Um, again, not quite a full replacement of what it could be in an in-person class group work with your uh, friends and classmates, but um, kind of a version of it that I'm giving my good college effort. Oh, no, sorry, good college try.